Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a very large book haul. As I mentioned in my April Reads video, um, in the month of April I was away for three weeks so I was able to go to a lot of places and look at used bookstores, um, bookstores and also I got a lot of books for some, from some friends as well as um, a free recycle recycling book program that we have in Baltimore so I want to go through these as quickly as possible. So the first place I went to was Berkeley, California and they have many used bookstores there. Um, it's a very good place to buy to buy books but also to trade books if you're interested. Um, and what I was looking for there was a lot of books or, or for books that I don't think it'd be easy for me to find. I have a large interest in literary fiction, however I know that it's easy to get a lot of those books from the library and literary fiction can definitely um, take up a lot of room in your luggage so I went looking for things that were different. So um, due to my interest in um, being half Vietnamese and having lived in Vietnam I wanted to get some books about the Vietnam War um, from a different perspective. So I got this book uh, which is a part of the People's History series. This is A People's History of the Vietnam War. Um, maybe some of you have read A People's History of the United States um, which kind of shows uh, history from a different perspective. Um, history is usually written by the winners and it's good to look at history um, from other uh, sides of the story. So I'm excited to read this one. And then I got this other nonfiction book. It's called The Vietnamese American 1.5 Generation. And um, it essentially talks about um, the refugee boat people who left Vietnam in 1975 fleeing the war, which is my mother was one of those people. And so I wanted to read more about their life and what it was like um, being um, essentially first generation or what they consider 1.5 generation, one and a half generation, um, um, like Vietnamese American essentially. So I'm very excited to read this book. So that's all that I got at used bookstores in Berkeley and then after that I went to Baltimore City where I used to live and I have a friend uh, who gave me some arcs. Um, so I got this arc of Housefrau by Jill Alexander Esbaum and I've seen this on a lot of new fiction shelves at another uh, a bookstore here where I live and so I'm excited to read that. I also got this uh, fiction novel called Her by Harriet Lane. It's not related to the movie. Nonetheless, you should watch that movie if you haven't. It's amazing. And then I also got this book. It's called Early Warning by Jane Smiley. It's another ARC copy and I saw this recently on the new fiction bookshelf as well. So I'm very happy to have gotten those from my friend. Um, after that, in Baltimore City, they have a place called The Book Thing, which is wonderful. It's a wonderful place because it's essentially a non-profit, a, like, recycling books exchange. And essentially what you can do there is you drop off books and then you can take books. And it's open on the weekends and um, it, you can just take them home with you. And it's great. Um, so you can get rid of books that you don't want, but I pick up great books all the time there. Um, so I picked up a ton of books um, as much as I wanted to fit in my in my luggage. Um, so I'll go through those. I got this book, The Know-It-All, One Man's Humble Quest to Become the Smartest Person in the World by A.J. Jacobs. I think the guy decides to read the entire um, Encyclopedia Britannica from A to Z, so that's an interesting book. Um, I also have an interest in feminism, so I got this book called Yes Means Yes, Visions of Female Sexual Power and a World Without Rape by Jacqueline Friedman and Jessica Valenti, and I've been meaning to read more things by Jessica Valenti, and I do have a lot of interest in um, the problem of rape culture in the United States. I really want to get that new book, uh, Missoula, if you, if you haven't heard of that one yet. Um, about rape culture on on the Missoula College campus so I'm really interested in reading that one. Um, I also got this little book it's called But Is It Art by Cynthia Freeland. Um, it's just sometimes when I teach art I think that contemporary art and art in general can be a little bit of a mystery to people and so sometimes it helps me to even though I studied art and have a background in it it's good to read these uh, books that are I guess that 
that set it out for people in a very easy way because it helps me to create easy language to uh, talk about art with my students to help them appreciate art if they have no background. So that's a good book. I got this book, which I really love the cover by Ray Bradbury, The October Country, which is a collection of his short stories. I have read uh, Ray Bradbury's The Illustrated Man, which is a short stories collection. And I've also read uh, Danny Line Wine and Fahrenheit 51 is one of my favorite books of all time. And I actually want to revisit it. Um, so I'm really happy to pick up more Ray Bradbury. Um, I got this book, uh, We Are All Completely Besides Ourselves, which is by Karen Joy Fowler. I don't know anything about it, but I've been looking, um, looking for more good fiction. Um, I got The Brief Wonderful, Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow by Junio Diaz. I don't know if I said that correctly. I also got The 10th of December by George Saunders. I've been meaning to read this as well. Um... Next, I have All the Pretty Horses by Carmack McCarthy. I have only read The Road, and I started reading like Cities on the Plain by Carmack McCarthy, but I absolutely love his language. Um, so I think this is the first book in the Border Trilogy series, and I cannot re wait to read this book. Um, I love his voice. Uh, I also got Let the Gr Great World Spin by Colum McCann. Uh, I've been looking for this as well. I've seen it many places used at a low cost, but now I have it for free. Um, I also got a book by J.M. Coetzee. I've, I don't know if I said that right either. I've been meaning to read something from this writer, and this book is called Slow Man. I picked this up at the book thing, but it's an arc as well. And then I don't typically read YA or mid-shelf, but... This is The Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time Indian um, which by Sherman Alexi. I hear this is great. I also want to read, uh, you know, uh, books by Native peoples. And this book has been banned in some schools, so I think it's probably even more important to read it. And then I have two more things. I have Mortality by Milan Kundera. Um, the Unbearable Lightness of Being is one of my favorite books as well as a movie I absolutely love because I'm a huge fan of Daniel Day-Lewis, so I'm excited to read more from him. His, his work becomes very existential and philosophical. Um, it's, not, it's usually not just a story and a plot line, but I, I enjoy that with his writing. And then I got this book. <laughs> I know there's so many. This is Telegraph Ave Avenue by Michael Chabon. It's a fiction book that takes place in Berkeley, California. Uh, I grew up in Berkeley, right and right close to Telegraph Avenue where I also went to school so I'm excited to read something that takes place in an area you know that's always fun and then um, I also took a short trip to New York City um, I have a few friends who are artists there so I went to go visit them and if you ever get a chance to go to New York City there are lots of used bookstores but especially I absolutely got lost and spent I just wasn't looking at my watch. I think two and a half hours at the Strand just looking at books. Um, and I ended up only picking up one book because of limitations in my luggage. Nonetheless, I got a lot of new books added to my to-be-read list or my wish list. I have been looking for this book for a while. It's called The Birth of Purgatory by Jacques Legoff. It basically chronicles the creation and the history of purgatory in the Catholic Church this is something that's always been an interest of mine. Um, so I'm really excited to have this. This book is out of print and I look for it everywhere. Uh, so it was really great to just walk into the Strand, go into their uh, religion section, and then just find it. So I'm very happy to finally own it. And then finally, um, one of my friends works at a bookstore called Karma Books. It's basically an art space, but they also publish books and sell books that they often do in collaboration with contemporary artists. So he nicely just gave me two books um, from their collection. This one, which he helped um, write, which is called The One, the Wonderful and Frightening World of the Fall. Um, it basically is just a book about this band called The Fall, but I'm really happy to read it because my friend is associated with it. And then he just gave me this random book, which I have no idea what it's about, but it's called Happy Failure by George Pendle. Um, these books are, I mean, they're self-published by this bookstore, so they don't have like the typical ISBN 
uh, numbers and barcodes as you're used to, but nonetheless, I think it's good to support independent bookstores. So that's what I got. I brought home a lot of books and a second, uh, a second piece of luggage. I'm excited to get reading and I'm excited to actually have books on my shelf now that I'm staying in America. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.